so we'll start with chapter 3 so 3 uh, where is 1 and 2 right according to me my personal preference right i would like to start with 3 then i will go with 2 then 1 4 and 5 that is my order right i would request you also to go through this order only right please do not go in the numerical order which is given in your book go by 3 2 1 and then go 4 and 5 right please watch in that scenario now to give you some information about chapter 3 right chapter 3 name yes i told us information system pet name is information system but the full name is information system and its components and its components are we clear sir how much marks will come from this chapter sir that's the first question no you guys are uh, uh, this chapter is worth studying or not correct now there are five chapters in eis correct so this is the third chapter for 50 marks based on the last three attempts based on the last three attempts i consider last three attempts only because i believe in trends okay and syllabus also vastly changed in the last three attempts it was not the same as before this paper especially it has, it has undergone a lot of changes in the last three attempts right so 10 marks generally is being asked average right average 10 marks has been asked typically two questions okay and some speciality about this chapter is that this is the longest chapter right this is the lengthiest and longest chapter i have given part a only right so this is the longest chapter so if we finish this majority of the what is the other chapters will be lesser lesser days so you can calculate okay first chapter took this many days i mean third chapter took this many days next chapters will be a little bit much more faster to complete are we clear done this is the ov of this chapter any other details you want uh, from this chapter no other details now coming to the notes part as i told you 3.1 3.2 all refers to the what to the ICA study material numbering right in case they amend right if they case institute will say i have changed 3.2 then i will also change it here so in the future if there is changes you can always my notes will be relevant you can go there respective ha, this point has been changed you can always write it down are we clear so that it helps you to monitor second thing what i give is i would also be mentioning right you see may 22 addition or amendment this is they have made some amendment in this syllabus may 2022 syllabus i have highlighted this also sir why have you highlighted i have a reason for it see institute like to ask the amended questions not only my subject every subject if there is amendment institute will test that is the reason they are amending right right some changes required i have changed it i will ask it also so these amendment questions are very important questions at least for the next few attempts are we clear so that extra attention can be a little bit put and i will also give my examples i would have written so if i mean i'll be giving a bank example so that's why it's written bank if you can recollect that then that is also is helpful for your examination then i would also be giving you short word techniques this is a little bit phd in software network you will not understand what does this mean P stands for people, H stands for hardware, D stands for data, software, network, components of information network. Right, PhD in software network. So if you remember this, you can remember the points. Like this, I have made certain things. Are we clear? So if you want it, you can use these shortcuts. If you do not want, you can ignore. They are always highlighted in red. They are highlighted in red. So amendments will be highlighted in yellow right shortcuts will be um, uh, highlighted in red some important points if i feel let's say for hardware the definition very important point is this that is tangible portion of the computer system 
tangible portion of the computer system if i mention that if i have underlined this word should be there the other things can are little bit optional from my example point of view you should also write that right i'm not saying you can ignore it but if you are not writing that or writing in your own words also it's fine because we are all human beings right we can't mug up the entire thing please accept the fact you cannot mug up the entire thing and go and produce it okay so accept that and prepare accordingly are we clear so this is my overview of the notes right got an idea of it and it will be in a tabular uh, tabular form so function of information system means function how a information system functions these are the points okay clear ah understood ah done pa chalo now i'll give you an example or story you tell me sir i'll ask you at, at the end of the day one question okay so you have to tell me what it is again i have to draw only mm. my drawing you know I, i guess you are a big fan of my drawing okay this bank you are going to a bank called no bank okay very first class bank you should have heard of it okay no bank you are going to the person okay when you enter the bank you see one watchman with that gun you is there no kuchi is watching properly okay there's one gun gun guy proper you enter the door there is full ac nice cold bank ac is there you sit on the chair right your number comes on the number board you go to the bank officer that bank officer she has one laptop she has one laptop in that there is one software no bank software is there to get bank related details okay now you go and ask madam madam i want my i want to know my bank balance i want to know my bank balance okay now this computer is connected this computer is connected to the headquarters this is the branch only it is connected to the headquarters database you think all your information will be in that branch no it will be in the headquarters database right it is connected through some network okay now she searches okay i want this person's ka bank details she will ask you so what all she will ask you sir can i have your name mobile number account email id whatever it is right she will ask and she will enter and she will enter it will go fetch the data and get she will say sir you have 100 rupees balance and she will look up and down for 100 rupees you came all the way ha huh? right and you will be very shocked 100 rupees aya ba right i thought only 90 rupees okay you decided i'll withdraw 10 rupees you withdraw 10 rupees she withdraws angry but what to do she withdraws 10 rupees and gives you 10 rupees and she updates automatically its system gets updated 10 rupees and it sent the data is sent back to the database that you have withdrawn 10 rupees right and you still you are in that bank you are taking some ac that 10 rupees you walk you go now according to you what is information system here according to you what is information system here right the bank manager gives balance ah uh, so bank manager gives the balance that is information system okay bank manager server the server headquarters ka server is the information system am i right okay no one is wrong you can tell whatever it is i'm asking a question this now you can interact you can be hmm name board of the bank name board of the bank okay huh database okay database recordings and updates all the recordings and the upgradations okay then online you can also tell database 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 ah everyone is saying database hmm that is all information okay ah 
full set sir right from bank manager to the database is getting right is saying this is the bank balance he takes a print out and gives no sir the printer also is a data information system ah okay mm very good mm that we'll see what is information system according to the book da now before we go to that information system right now you would have heard you mean system what is this you mean ecosystem solar system hmm what is this system system and information system all system ya yeah. ha ah. what is ecosystem environment ha ah. what is environment ecosystem means what which helps you to live in we call it as ecosystem right ecosystem can be tiger lion uh, ant sand water right there are a lot of common co co components involved right the purpose is to make you live we call it as ecosystem immune system what is immune system there are a lot of things you know Ble what is a white blood cell red blood cell everything is there right medicine you take lot of things are working together to keep you or protecting you from external diseases all are working together right so we can define system as anything which works together different components or different uh, object uh, objects which are working together for a common purpose common purpose or goal we can take it as goal are we clear what is a system interrelated components which are working together inter related inter -rela related components which are working for a common goal are called as a system are we clear so ecosystem is for making you sustainable living right which helps you to live immune system is to protect you right what is this information system what is this information system information system is a system which it's a combination of different objectives or objects or components right it's a combination of different components which are there to provide you information which is there to provide you information we call it as information system are we clear again i'll repeat it's a combination of different objects right which work together to give a information we call it as information system so sir in this example you then you tell me what is information system everything is a part of information including the watchman which is with the kati or a gun outside right if he is not there anyone can enter the bank no information system will not work some robber will come and take it so everything from the printer database the person who is giving helping you right to give the print out which he gave right the printer which he used the software which we she used everything forms part of information system are we clear with information system definition now can we see the bookish definition information system is a combination of people hardware software communication devices data resources that process that process information for a specific purpose that process information for a specific purpose we call it as information system now people that person is there bank manager right hardware she was using the software i mean the computer inside that there was a software i told you right then communication devices yes how did she get the information from the headquarters there is some con connect with connection right right and from the data resource did she give a raw data to you 
no it was processed correct the data was processed it was retrieving the information it was retrieving the information and gave a balance then you withdraw money then what happened it stored that information back also right it stored transform the information and stored it back right and it was for a specific purpose it is for a specific purpose this is therefore to provide information for a specific purpose we call it as a information system the main purpose and aim of information system is to convert the data into information which is useful what is the main purpose of information system it is there to convert data into information now guys majority of you who are new to the subject get confused with it and is it is nothing but the hardware and the software which they are using the technology part we call it as it information technology it stands for information technology it is part of is okay the technology part we call it as it so during old days during old days banks were working you think they had computers then there is no information system there that time no it was there it was a manual system information system are you understanding it was a manual information it was a combination of people right there were some other communication devices right there were other things but that was a manual way of information system now in this chapter we are going to study about computer based information system only we are going to study about computer based information system only are we clear are we clear with what is information system done data information see data is nothing but raw facts right information is nothing but process data that's it okay this i guess it's very simple to understand that's why i did not explain that you know okay data is nothing but raw uh, things right one thousand doesn't make uh, sense for you or hundred hundred if i tell you what hundred account balance is hundred that is information process data we call it as information okay done sir is it necessary to write an example in the exam this analysis is for your understanding what is given in the book it's right okay but wherever is necessary if you feel you have time you think okay you want to give an example be free to give an example otherwise your book itself has given examples i would have mentioned that please mention that because if you give your own example there is a chance yes there is a chance that institute will appreciate that also but it's a person dependent one correct a person is correcting he will answer the, as the answer key you will think something he will think something right it will not match right so it is prefer to give the institute example itself my examples are my examples just for you to understand okay but wherever example is given by the institute i would have mentioned that are we clear this bank example is institute example no 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 it's my example <laughs> right guys if example is there i would have, i mean see for example i would have mentioned like this this is all institute example i would have mentioned the institute example there in my notes itself okay this all uh, institute has given it very plain right that is why you are here i believe if they give everything then if it's so easy then you would not require anything right so second topic there are some amendments here okay listen to it functioning of information how does a information system functions right very simple first input what did the man what is the uh, bank manager ask you certain data yes or no got some data collected data then she keyed in then the system process the software processed your data right fetched from the system and gave you the output yes or no it gave you the output this is your account balance then you withdraw money you asked for withdrawing money okay again it processed then you withdraw money the data was updated it was stored back that from 100 balance you went it to 90 balance that data process data again went and stored yes or no this is what the typical process of a information system is this is the typical 
process of a functioning this is how information system function but there is also while doing this two also summa will be there huh? you will give feedbacks right you can give feedbacks so feedbacks are also that is why they are given outside based on the output you can say sir why should i come to a bank and ask ma'am my account balance is there a way you can improve your uh, bank facility right you might give a feedback that they will incorporate it in their information system also in the future that is the so these three four processes are interlinked feedback is little bit outside which is also considered this is how an information system functions this is how an information system functions are we clear now guys uh, please understand here very important very important see this side headings are very very important which are in bold now given okay, you are writing an exam this is very important to know right side headings are very important for this particular subject if you get side headings right you get 50 to 60 percentage of your marks at least if your side reading is itself wrong then whatever content you are writing is also wrong can i assume that right so if you get the side reading correct then there is a better chance for you to score better marks so you need to remember the side readings that's a must inside it you can narrate your own story you can at least write what you have understood right for example input i said it very simply he collected the information that is understandable right can you go and write that in the exam or might not be the same right let's see how they are written data is collected from the organization or from external environment and converted into a suitable format for required for processing do you require explanation for this no so i am not going to go word by word and explain all these things are we clear i want you also to apply your head your mind and study okay whichever is important what is input what is processing what is output what is storage right all those things i'll give an example to give you a picture okay in case the worst scenario you forget it right you can use my examples to write it in the exam hall. that is appreciated okay worst case scenario but best case scenario is writing whatever they have written okay writing whatever they are given right are we clear how to write present done and one more thing please don't let's say this is asked for five marks you need to the diagram is given for a reason you need to draw this diagram also and write this okay and please don't have an observe, uh, observation that you will write the entire thing it is not possible you have to write in your own words also don't keep it a hard mucking up subject don't muck up too much also right underline few points uh, once you are written input for example i take input how you should study is input input means collecting data from external or internal sources in a suitable format that is re rememberable la okay go on that is enough correctly data is collected from the organization from external environment converted into suitable that then all don't have fancy aspirations okay i should write the ditto words that is not possible some students forget to appreciate the subject they'll go into mugging up if you understand the flow hey yeah bank example input is coming ah uh, process is happening output is happening uh, storage is happening then feedback is there he'll take the feedback information also needs feedback so that in uh, appropriate members of the enterprise helps to evaluate it in the input stage itself next time you come you, it will be improved that's all it is don't have real have realistic expectations how you are going to study are we clear from day one itself i am saying these things moving forward i will not be saying all these things because day one is the day where you are learning lot of things right you need to know how to present how to go about it all all first day will always be gyan day after that it will be full on topic 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 done topic topic done topic done okay done online any doubts okay this is not there in your syllabus i've just entered i mean written it just like that just for your understanding see as i told you information system existed before also we call it as with paper and pencil they maintain that is manual information system now we we are focused on computer based information system there is other things also like formal information system and uh, informal 
formal means you are writing down and communicating informal means borally you communicate that is informal okay this is not there in syllabus and just just written it down for you to appreciate that computer is not information system lot of students will have that knowledge a computer means information system information means computer no are we clear done now components 3.3 components of information system now what are the components of information system in our example we saw there is people there is hardware there is software there is data and network these are the five components five components of information system okay these are the five components of information system you will be seeing in detail each component hardware means what type of hardware software means what type of software you will be seeing everything in detail are we clear so let's move on so how to remember the components phd in software network okay p stands for people h hardware d data in software network easy okay for this you need not mug up itself this this will not be so helpful right if you ask me this is not helpful but summa i kept it right i am not sure whether it is easy or not if you want to use it you use it so in certain other places it will be very helpful we will do that also you will understand it right done now we will skip people right people is nothing but user the admin right the programmer end user we call it as people okay this we will see at last we will see it at last we will not be seeing it right now first we will be seeing hardware hardware now before we move on to hardware please appreciate when i call a computer right computer system when i say computer system i am meaning it's a combination of hardware plus software if there is no software it's just a monitor right if i keep a monitor or if i keep something you just call it as a monitor it's not a computer when its os is there the software is installed then only it is a computer system are we clear now what is hardware we are going to see the first part of computer system hardware what is the hardware tangible portion of the computer system tangible portion of the computer system what is tangible means tangible means which you can see touch feel we call it as tangible can you touch this mouse yes can i see ah, video is also there mm. you can touch the mouse feel it right so this is the tangible portion okay so in the exam word i have underlined tangible portion of the computer system this you have to write examiner will look for this okay example you can write your own examples here okay key keyboard hardware ipad everything is tangible now there are different types of hardware there are different types of hardware that is input devices output devices processing devices and data storage devices these are the four types of functions a device will do whether it will receive input or give output or process or it will what is a store data these are the four functions a device or a hardware will function okay first input device what is input device sir what is input device input device are devices through which we interact with the system right input devices are nothing but devices which we use to interact with system we call it as input devices right keyboard aren't we interacting with the system right mouse aren't we not interacting with the system these are all examples of input devices now what is output opposite of that devices through which system system responds what is output devices system through which system responds devices through which system responds it will monitor speaker screen printer they are responding to you right they are giving the output we call it as 
output. Sir, these responses can be of five types or these responses given by the system can be of five types. One is textual output. What is textual? Textual means word, letter, right? You know, text, right? That is textual output we call it as. Second one is called as graphical output. Second one is called as graphical output. Your picture, charts, diagrams, all are called as graphical outputs, right? Then there is, this one is a little bit different. You will not know. Tactile output. Tactile output is nothing but for blind people, can they see? Right? You know that they have a system to feel and see what it is. That output system will give, that is a special tool which they will have. Okay, that is a device for blind people. So, computer can give tactile output also. We call it as tactile output. Okay. Then, audio output. Yes. Can device give audio output? Yes, you are listening to music. Right. Or text. It will read out the page. That's all. Output. Audio output. Then, last one, it is video output. Video output is nothing but images are shown at some speed. It looks like a motion, right? So, video output. There are five outputs. Are we clear? Any questions still here? And one more thing before, I mean, after the, let's say I'm done with the portions, let's say for the day. I'll be there for next five, ten minutes. If I feel that, see, the entire class is understood, right? One or two students might not understand. That is okay, right? So, what I will do is, I will wait for them and I will answer your doubt at the end of the class okay otherwise we'll just disturb the flow of the class or we'll delay it. okay we'll see it in the end of the class means i will be there to clarify your doubts every doubt should be clarified but at the end of the class so that others we others will not move on clear ah? no doubts are ah? online now processing devices let's come to processing devices what is processing devices? In simple terms, devices which process <laughs> are called as processing device. Okay. But what is this process? There are three things. Process devices used to process data using program instructions or manipulate functions or performs calculations or control other hardware. These devices use they are capable of controlling other hardware or performing calculations or manipulating functions or carry out an instruction. These are the four functions a processing device can do. Okay. So, examples would be CPU is the best, best processing, right? It does calculations. Yes. It performs, it controls other hardware. Yes. Then it manipulates functions and carry out instructions. Yes. That is the work of a CPU. See, there are other uh, processing units which you are not aware. I'll tell you. There's something called sound card, network card, video card and all, graphics card and all. Have you heard of it? Right. They are tools for processing. Sound card is for processing your sound data. So, uh, that uh, Atmos uh, HD effect uh, listening and all is there now. How is it made? Sound card. Okay. See, see signal, YouTube, let's take. In your phone, your friend's phone, if he has a good phone, it's listening very good. Yes or no? In your phone, it might be okay. How? Because he might have a better sound card. Data is same. The way it is processed differs. That is because of sound card, network card, motherboard and other things. Okay. These are not very technical. You need not know. Just know the example. That is more than enough. Are we clear? The most important processing unit they are going to discuss is CPU. Okay. CPU. What is CPU? Central Processing Unit. Okay. Central Processing Unit or also called as Brain of the Computer. Brain of the Computer. Because it only calculates everything. Everything you need to Any performance has to be interaction with the CPU. Any performance needs to interact with the CPU. Now you want to print. CPU has to go and give, carry out the instructions, right? You want to open a file, CPU has to carry out the instruction. You want to watch a video, everything CPU only does. So what does CPU does? CPU will interpret 
and execute the program that is software right is interpreted see i'll just give you what a software software is nothing but a set of instructions what is we'll see detail about software but here itself software is coming i'll just tell you software is nothing but a set of instructions okay now you go straight left left take right you will reach bathroom and if you go like this okay are you pro you will reach bath right this is set of instructions if i can code it right come to uh, coder that we call it as coder now i can program right and the the instructions will be carry out interpretation is done by the cpu by the computer are we clear that is what interpreting and executing the program mean right and also to work it interprets the program as well as coordinates the other devices it will also coordinate the other devices what to do it will tell the instructions to the monitor show the screen it will tell the mouse okay you are asking me to go here i'll go there okay everything this cpu only does so cpu right you know how cpu is made right this is not there for your i mean exam just understand just for your information cpu has lot of transistors okay transistors are nothing but uh, uh, what to say buttons you know this on off button right if you off you can call it as zero when it's on it's called as one okay so there will be billion or million transistors inside the cpu small chip will be there no there will be so many small 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 transistors will be there inside that which will be constantly turning on turning off which will give what 010101 what is 010101 binary code this is how it is translating this is how our computer is working are you understanding this is for general information not the required by your syllabus okay so this is how it communicates in binary are we understanding here clear now cpu has three functions sir cpu can be broken down into three functions let us see the first one is control unit control unit now before we understand the technicality we have to give a small example our understanding example right now let's say you want to some uh, some work is given to cpu okay some work is coming like input devices is giving okay some work first one bodyguard is there called as control unit bodyguard is there called control unit is a wait control unit can you word itself will say he controls everything he will say wait or he will say you go you come everything is controlled by the controlling unit right he will control the inflow of data okay see he will control the inflow of data to the cpu control unit that is the it's like a booth he'll put okay data should go inside means ask permission i will decide whether you want to allow or go are you understanding as well as exit going out also you have to ask him control unit will say which task to be executed executed which task to be executed right which task to be performed all the controlling unit only will decide for example for example let us say i send i send this instruction i send this instruction 2 plus 2 is plus 4 i give this instruction okay control unit you will say stop 2 plus 2 you go first okay then okay 2 plus 2 goes first there is something called alu can you see alu that is the second function alu performs arithmetic calculation or arithmetic operation alu calculates or carries out the instructions in the form of addition minus multiplication division as well as it does logical comparison greater than equal to and less than these are the task 
performed by alu so who control this input first control unit set 2 plus 2 go so alu will calculate that alu will calculate that 2 plus 2 now what is 2 plus 2 4 now where in your finger you keep it no 2 plus 2 is 4 correct this is how you keep it remind right now similarly this alu right will send it to a register that is the processor register we call it as this is nothing but memory unit this is nothing but a memory unit it stores data 2 plus 2 is 4 that 4 is stored in this cpu right now so these are very high speed very small memory units within the cpu for storing minimum data okay now what happens for then 2 plus 2 4 comes then control unit will say okay plus 4 you also go then 4 plus 4 is 8 calculate data from the register also it stores 8 from register it goes to what is a output device it will go to output device it will show you 8 this is how a cpu functions this is how a cpu functions are we clear I will go into detail actually. I just gave an overview. Okay, we will read it one by one. What is the sentence? Then we will, what to say, see it. Now, see, uh, let us zoom in. Yeah, yeah. Control unit. Control unit flow controls the flow of input, output of data from the memory and interprets the instructions and controls which tasks to be execu executed and when. So I told you control guy is the boss of the CPU. He will tell what to come, who to come, what work to do for the CPU also. ALU performs arithmetic operation like addition, subtraction, multiplication and logical comparison. What is logical comparison means? Greater than, less than, equal to. Okay. And processor register. What is processor register? Very high, very small memory units. Your hard disk is also memory only. Memory. Correct? Huh? Your hard disk is the memory, but it's very large. 40 GB, 50 GB or uh, 1000 GB also you get it at. But this is very small, very small, 32, 32 to 64 bits. Right? It is bits, 32, 64 bits. See, this processor register can be further divided into four works. Processor register can be further divided into four works. Let's see. It can, register could be used as an accumulator. Accumulator, 2 plus 2, 4. You are accumulating, right? If the bit bigger equation means you will keep on accumulating. It can be used for accumulating the data. Or second, register, ad address register. Now, let us say this, you gave this instructions, right? From somewhere from the memory only you would have given. Somewhere from the computer. Some other part of the computer only this instruction would have come. From where did it come? Where is the address? Correct? This instruction will have an address. Yes or no? From some device. Is it D drive? E drive? Where are you executing it from? That address will be there, no? It will come, no? The CPU will store that address. Where is the information, instruction coming from? And where should I put the information? So it will store. Okay, this file needs to be transferred from C to D. Ah, so it will store from C to D. I have to transfer. I have to transfer. So one one file. Ah, you see the processing bar. Why is it not doing everything? But control unit is controlling. Ah, this file you go. This file you go. That file you go. Slowly, it will it will remember also. Processing register will in remember. Okay, from this files, this is C drive. You have to move it to D drive. All that address also it can use. So, processor register, it is a use case. It's not necessary you have to use only for this. It, it can be used for storing address also. Right? Then, it can be used for storage purposes for data temporarily. Any other data if you want to store it temporarily. Right? It can be stored. Let's say you delete the file. Control Z, it is coming back. Sorry, Control Z. How temporary storage is all done here sometimes. Are we clear? 
that is storage register it can be used for other several purposes miscellaneous purposes which is not there in your book i am not going to touch it okay these are the reasons how or why a process register is used yes any questions please ask ha huh, intel is a processor example if you want cpu intel is a processor qualcomm is a processor lot of processors are there the famous is intel and amd and as well as apple is coming you know apple 11 point bionic chip 11 12 13 14 16 they come you now bionic chip that is all processor chip yes m1 apple m1 so there is limitation of how many calculations and all it can do the your control device unit is there no it can allow lot more things then what your calculation is faster there is cores and all that that's not there in your syllabus right four core hecta core right configuration of your laptop and all right but what we do now which is the best of all laptop now correct that we'll move on to data storage we'll move on to data storage see data storage as a pet name called memory okay memory card your word no ah uh, data storage can be also called as memory what is the use of memory to store data and program where the data and stored and program is stored we call it as a memory okay are we all clear now there are different types of memory okay there are different types of memory this is called as internal memory these are called as main memory or primary memory this is called as secondary or external memory okay we'll see it one by one what is it in detail okay now internal memory okay internal memory what is it now we have already seen these are memories which are stored inside your cpu itself we call it as what is a internal memory let us see register processor register we just saw now right these are internal memory which are very fast and very small very small and very fast okay done there is something called cache memory okay it is also pronounced as cache only do do okay it's pronounced as cache memory now what is this cache memory okay in simple terms i'll tell you okay let's say you are keep on opening one software okay so keep on opening one software you will understand no if you are keep on seeing your let's say your brother is always on one software you know you, your brother or sister is always using that software yes or no similarly computer also knows even computer will know ah this guy has opened ah he is going to open this file only okay so computer will become smarter as you keep on using it so let's say you are going to use always when you open your phone you go to whatsapp it will know it's going you are going to use whatsapp what will do is it will take some mem- uh, certain portions of the instruction keep it in the cache memory so when you open whatsapp immediately it will open from the cache and show it to you the process will be much more faster the execution will be much more faster rather than taking it from the main memory right you will understand this after uh, one to two lines okay we should go to main memory then only you will understand this cache memory more in detail right but instead of going to the main memory and getting the details it will be already in the cache memory immediately you will give uh, the computer will execute the software and give it to you so normally you th- take an example you you would have found this right you open a website okay any website you open the first time it loads little bit extra time it takes the second time you just close it and load it it load faster yes or no why some things are stored in your computers cache cache is created so that it helps you to load it much more faster next time okay so 
Cache is also smaller, very fast memory, which copies data from the most frequently used main memory location. This word you will not understand because main memory you do not know, right? It's okay. So that processor can access more rapidly than the main memory. We'll go to main, main memory, understand that, then we'll come back here. Okay, don't worry. But try to understand something is frequently used from a main memory. So this cache is there. That you have understood till now. That's all you need to understand now. We'll go to main memory, then we'll come. Okay, that this explanation, we'll see it later. So this is the pixelated form of motherboard. Okay. You see here, this is hard disk. Okay. This is CPU. This is ROM. This is RAM. Okay. This is the, the address bus or data bus. These cables are all called as data bus. Why data bus? Because they carry out the data. The transport service they provide. Okay. That is why they called as data bus. Are you understanding? See the image. Very important for you. CPU, ROM, RAM and data, uh, what to say, disk drive. Now, this RAM you see, right? And this ROM you see. These together, RAM and ROM, we call it as main memory. We call it as main memory. Are we clear? Okay, main memory. Now, please understand always, please always understand here, whenever you execute a software, when you're playing a game, watching a video, okay, let us say you have a pen drive, you have a pen drive, video is there, video is there, okay. You attach it to the CPU, you attach it to the, sorry, computer. And you run the video. Now what happens to you, you know? The video from your pen drive gets transferred to the RAM. RAM. Gets transferred to the RAM. Right? From pen drive, it goes to RAM. From RAM, the CPU speaks or gets the instructions. I told you know CPU gets the instructions from the memory. Yes or no? That is this main memory only they are talking about. It gets instructions from the RAM. Hey, they are asking it to execute this. CPU will execute it. Are we clear here? So the data which you are in the pen drive does not execute it in the pen drive. It gets transferred to the RAM. From RAM, it gets transferred to the CPU and the CPU interprets and goes about it. Are we clear? That is why when you switch off, right? When you switch off the uh, laptop, video stops playing. If it's in, it's there in pen drive only, no? If you turn it on, it should be there in your pen drive, right? It will permanently store in the pen drive. But while running, it runs on RAM. That is why when you say, they, you go and ask, no? Your mobile guy or your laptop guy. Sir, Anna, how much RAM, no? Subconsciously, you know, more, greater the RAM, faster the computer so if it's a 4 gb ram then your 2 gb um, what is a movie can be easily stored on the ram and it can be easily processed imagine it is only 1 gb ram you have 4 gb 5 gb uh, movie you have to play then what will happen only 1 gb of the ram uh, data can be moved to ram right whatever is moved will be playing smoothly but if you fast forward sometimes it'll get stuck because that is not loaded in ram that is not loaded in RAM. Then it lasts. Oh, this guy is asking that video. Ah, okay, get that and put that. Replace it. That portion alone. They'll split the video and take whatever data is in it. This is how it carries out. So, remember one thing. CPU does not speak to your hard disk. CPU will not speak to your pen drive. CPU will only speak to who? RAM. Very important to understand this. Okay. Now, let us read the first point. Primary memory or main memory. These are devices in which any location, any location, any location means RAM has 4GB, let's say 4GB RAM. 
then it's a location only, no memory. Storage house. Take it as a storage. Ram. Memory is nothing but a storage place. Correct. So any location can be accessed by the CPU in any order. In any order. There's no sequence. That is you have to it, it has to take only from one, two, three. It can take from hundred to any any location. CPU can take the instructions from and carry out the process. Are we clear here? Right? It is directed directly accessed by the processor using data bus. You saw the data bus now. What is data bus? You saw this now. See the wire. RAM. You see this? RAM. This is RAM. Connected by data bus to the CPU. Are you seeing this? This is what they are trying to say. When you read it as a statement alone, you will be like, ah, what data bus? Say? What a bus? As lorry. Ah. So, it is volatile. Right? And, or non-volatile in nature. Now, guys. Now they are bringing the concept called as ROM. ROM. RAM is called as read only memory. ROM is called, sorry, RAM is called as random access memory. ROM is called as read only memory. Read only memory. Now, let us take some time to understand this. Now, you are turning off your, turning on your laptop or your phone, whatever you take. It's turning on, huh? When you switch off the button, it's turning on. How does the computer know? You are not installed any software, correct? Right, you are not installed any software, but the computer is turning on, correct? How? So, the manufacturer, right? Manufacturer would have put, would have dedicated, you would have said a memory space like this file. See ROM here? Manufacturer would set up a special place there where he writes a set of instructions which cannot be changed. Which cannot be changed. Which will carry out instructions like whatever I told, turning off the turning on the mobile. That is the most important. No? So that is why it's called as read-only memory or ROM. You can only read, you cannot write. What all you can do in a computer? You can read, write, delete, move, right? You can do a lot of activities in a computer. But in ROM, you can only read. Only read. So, these instructions are from the manufacturer. And it only gets changed. Very rare. Very rare. But nowadays, they are changing. That also updation is coming. Okay. Just to speed up, speed up, and uh, speed up certain things and other things, right? And you know what? In the computer, I'll give you another example. When the computer is updating, they will say, "Is it plugged to the internet?" Sorry, it is plugged to the what is it called? Uh, uh, charger? Yes or no? Is it plugged to the charger? Do not turn off your laptop. Why? Because sometimes ROM gets updated that time. When ROM is getting updated, it's very, very important. If something goes wrong, there, your computer itself will get blanked. Very important information to execute are basic things are there in the ROM. Right? That is why they are asking your computer to be in full charge, always connected to a charger, don't update it. Something happens there, wrong, go in there. Your computer will crash. But now they have implemented some alternative techniques, right? Even if that happens, you can recover now they have built in those uh, softwares right before it was not able to do that also right anyway this is the most now now these instructions when you turn off does it disappear no it is always stored it's always stored in rome so only it is called as non volatile so only it's called as non volatile volatile means keeps on changing RAM, when you, you can play video, tomorrow you can play a game, then you can play Excel file, sorry, use an Excel file, right? You can do anything. Random access, it keeps on changing. It is volatile. If you turn off, go in the, everything goes away. Everything goes away, right? That is, boom. are we clear? Now, it is non-volatile and non-volatile in nature, being small in storage capacity. Does uh, uh, RAM come in uh, 50 GB, 60 GB? No, it is small 
storage capacity. Ends cannot be used to store on permanent basis. It cannot be used to store data on permanent basis. It has two types, random access memory and read-only memory. Now, let us read fast, fatafat here. Okay. This I have explained here. It's more of differentiation. They can ask a differentiation. You should be able to read it. Data retention. What is it? Random access, RAM. RAM. What do you think data retention should be? If you turn off, everything goes away. But read only, it is always there, even if power is off. Right? Persistence. What is it? The purpose is to hold program and data while using it. Here it is to hold the, what is it? Basic input and output system or transistors, translating softwares. Right? That is what these are there for. Store rarely changed information or instructions. Right? Information can be read as well as modified. Here only it can be read. Storage. Storage for using whatever you are using. That program gets stored here. That's why it's called as temporary memory also. Here it is generally used by the manufacturer to store data. Right? These are permanent memory. Right? In fact, Volatile memory such as RAM has high impact on system performance. Non-volatile has very less. Pro you don't go and ask, what is the ROM of the computers there? No, no. RAM only you go and ask. No. That is what it is. Cost. Very co high. Right. Higher the RAM, higher the cost. Right. ROM is a little bit cheaper. Uh, RAM speed is very fast. ROM is a little bit slow. Right. RAM is higher capacity compared to ROM. RAM is higher capacity compared to ROM. Guys, please understand here. I, I, did I say anything about hard disk? No. Hard disk there, where it will come? It will come in the secondary memory. Okay. So, because hard disk is also, when I buy a laptop, hard disk is there. No, sir. Correct? No, sir. That is also a primary memory. No, sir. No. RAM is different from ROM. Sorry. ROM is different from hard disk, which is internally there. Pen drive is hard disk. Pen drive, everything will come under secondary memory only. Okay, now let us go to the cache memory. Now you will understand it better. Let us read it. Cache is smaller and faster than the, what is it? Main memory, right? Which stores a copy of data, which is frequently used from the main memory. Now, let us say RAM, you are using it. Okay, Excel file, you would have used it. Suddenly something happened, it got closed. When you open your laptop, again you'll say, Excel file you are using. You want to open it? From where it is coming? Cache memory. Unsaved document nowadays it's there, no? Yes or no? Unsaved documents you are able to find. Where? It is there in cache. Because cache can be a little bit permanent. RAM is always gone. Okay? So it st stores a copy of a frequently used memory. So that RAM can access more rapidly than the main memory. So rapidly than the main memory. Are we clear with cache memory also now? No questions. Now processor register and cache memory. Processor register. What is processor register? These are high speed. Super speed. This is. Cache is faster. So I mean less faster than processor register. But okay. Register only, are only memory units that most processor can operate on directly. Cache memory is an interface between CPU and the main storage. So they are acting as a bridge. Okay. To bridge the gap. See, register cannot store too many information. Cache can store a little bit more than the register. That's all it is. So to match the speed, certain files you have to load very fast. It can't be in uh, cache. If it's in main memory, it'll take a little bit more time. So, cache is an intermediate solution. Are we clear? Done. So, it is not directly accessible for operations. Then, this is what you need to... Just read through it, you will understand it. Okay? Later on, there is nothing major. Now, you see the speed. Processor register is the fastest. Then, cache. Then, primary memory and secondary memory. Now, let's go to secondary memory. These are non-volatile. What is non-volatile? Does not change. Contents. Pen drive, you upload certain information. Goes away because turn off. Computer turn offs? No, it is permanent. They are larger in size. Yes. They are cost lesser than compared to RAM. So, what has, what has happened is, I'll tell you to evolve evolution. 
right before the coding was done even humans used to code 010101 okay but you think it's very easy to code 010101 no so what they do is they they found coding languages called as c++ and all those things java and all those things when you write let's say uh, uh, in java you can humans can i mean humans can understand let's say hashtag #open so so and file right and i do not know java or c++ but when you write that code java as a uh, they would have had a main software translator we call it as okay that instruction is embedded in the uh, cpu so when you write in java code that gets translated into 001111 rather than you writing 0111 as a code right you are writing for java java translate it from there that is how it works right so all those informations are stored where in the rom all basic basic instructions to operate a computer right cache is just for as a additional privilege kind of a memory i is going to use the same file let me store a copy of it and keep it near my cpu right it's just like what is a let's say you are working you are the cpu right you always need a pen the storage area is there only outside our room correct so every time you will have to go and get it what you will do you will keep it nearby no pen yes or no that is what cache is what category does motherboard come motherboard tell me ma what category it's there in the example itself if you see the notes python language is not stored in roms python is a language in that's it translator uh, the translator is stored in rom the instruction to translate no that is stored in rom python is not stored in because there are so many languages no? you think let's say hindi tamil telugu malayalam everything is there everything will be stored in rom no no space will be there <laughs> but a translator can be stored which will translate all the languages it's all like this you can see here everyone so all are theory subjects okay and and this this diagram is not there in your textbook by the way okay just giving a heads up this diagram is not there in your heads up so don't draw this sum wherever you see this yellowish tint uh, uh, greenish and yellow that is from your textbook right blue color yellow color and all this is from your textbook i can i guess you can identify it after you study other subjects right first subject you will be like oh, different color normally these are the colors which they use okay clear online students are you with me got it right secondary memory right secondary memory let's sketch up devices are non volatile what does that means non volatile means it will be permanent it will not go away if your system turns off right greater capacity yes greater economy that means what cheaper than ram correct rams are 1 gb or 2 gb or ram is costlier than 1 tb itself of hard disk right done slower in speed yes little bit slower and secondary storage is not directly accessible by cpu that means what cpu cannot talk with secondary it can only talk with primary that is how it works done now difference between primary and secondary you should know let us run through it you have understood the concept and nothing something special would be here primary memory can be accessed by cpu whereas here not possible right data which is running will be stored in the main memory here permanently data will be stored it is volatile here non volatile right here they use semiconductors see silicon okay cpu is made up of silicon whereas here it can made of cd magnet your magnetic device only you know hard disk comes in different instruments are used speed here of course primary memory is faster right here is directly direct bus gives it here from output input channel that is your usb basically or other you uh, connection points right size it is little bit smaller here it's bigger right primary memory is uh, primary memory is called as in, is an internal memory where a secondary memory is called as external memory okay but here it's little bit confused. what is are you said internal here they are saying as it is is part of the system there it's outside the system that is what they mean right so here primary memory is costlier here it's cheaper that's all it is 
are we clear now fourth one surprise surprise there is something called virtual memory okay secondary memory first memory primary memory okay virtual memory is there okay please understand this is not there in your syllabus they have removed it okay but in the later chapter they are going to say virtual memory that they have not removed so if i don't explain now you will get stuck there now okay that is why i have to i am forced to explain here otherwise we would have to be done for the day that let us see virtual memory is a imaginary memory area supported by the operating system in conjunction with the hardware okay i'll read fully then we will explain are we clear ram runs slow cpu uses vital virtual memory to compensate move the data from ram to temporary space called as paging file moving data to and from from the paging file frees ram to complete its work the virtual memory is equal to ram plus paging file understood da wonder done go ha huh? Hmm. Now let's say a simple example for it. Now, I open my phone. Okay, open WhatsApp. Then what should I open? Hmm. Snapchat. Ah. Huh? Instagram. Then Facebook. Google Chrome. Ah. Huh? Then in shorts. Are you pro app? Ah. Huh? Everything you should open. No. Now imagine these many apps are opening. No. RAM is what. you can only have little storage so when you are trying to open when you are trying to open multiple files right when ram gets full computer will say hey ram is full how can you open don't open can it give a instruction like you that to you it will be like what is this correct what a phone not even able to run more than three apps you will say what the operating system this is a feature of a operating system what is operating system your windows apple os android this ability is with the operating system not the ability of the cpu or anything this ability of the operating system with the conjunction with of the hardware that is it takes a support of the conjunction means with support okay with support of the hardware okay what it does it it creates a imaginary memory area it creates a imaginary memory area this imaginary memory area is called as paging file it's called as paging file now to understand it further let's say you open the first whatsapp okay then instagram then arivu pro app then google chrome okay this is the apps which you have opened the first time whatsapp you open it opened in ram correct instagram you open it opened ram then arivu pro app it opened in ram when you open google drive ram was full google ram was full now what will the operating system will do is pa you are going see only one is going to be displayed yes or no everything is going to be displayed no only one thing is going to be this what will the operating system do is you'll say boss இத ரெண்டுத்தையும் எடுத்து கோ அண்ட் புட் இட் சம்வேர் டெம்பரலி டேக் இட் டெம்பரலி அண்ட் ஃபார்ம் பிளேஸ் இட் இன் அ செகண்டரி இட் டேக்ஸ் தி ஹெல்ப் ஆஃப் தி செகண்டரி மெமரி एक्चुअली இட் டேக்ஸ் தி இட் ஹஸ் டு பீ ஸ்டோர்ட் சம்வேர் ரைட் எஸ் ஆர் நோ फ्रॉम ராம் இஃப் இட்ஸ் நாட் ஸ்டோர்ட் இட் ஹஸ் டு பீ ஸ்டோர்ட் சம்வேர் சோ லெட் us say this is secondary memory it takes a portion of the secondary memory converts as if it's a ram takes a portion of a secondary mem- memory converts as if it's a portion of a ram it's not technically ram but for your understanding i'm just telling you okay technicality don't go into this is just for your understanding this portion we call it as paging file paging file are we clear now once you close uh, google drive you what is the open in whatsapp so whatsapp will come to ram paging file will go to uh, sorry uh, google uh, google chrome will go to paging file this is how so that the current program which is running ram will help you to run faster that is how system works 
let us read it now you will understand it when ram runs slow cpu will use virtual memory to compensate it moves the data from ram to a temporary space called as paging file moving data to and from from the paging file frees up the ram and completes its work virtual memory is nothing but what is virtual memory ram plus paging file got it ah got it everyone secondary okay i got your question sir secondary also is full primary also full what will happen correct ah system you have got hang ah system will get hang ah for you for your system you are troubling your system too much no ah no got the answer sorry Ah. See, secondary, secondary. You are asking a very hypothetical question. Will secondary memory ever be full? If it's too much of memory, it'll say your memory is full. Your your PC will slow down. Have you seen it? It will not open. It'll say close. It'll automatically close the other app. Have you ever seen your phone? Right. You you would have opened one app. Is it always open? For the next. Five minutes will be open. After that, you see it again closes it, right? So it will close. Computer, the OS here, the the guy who is playing is the OS. The operating, the soft operating system has built in such a way that it will able to manage. Okay, so don't take it as a physical location. Certain things will not apply like that. Okay, done. Any other question? Few devices runs multiple apps at the same time. How is it running? RAM is bigger. Here also it was running Instagram and WhatsApp, and Aribo Pro app also. When you open Google Drive, it did not have RAM space, so it compensated. Right? That's how it is. So, or if you, let's say you're playing a hundred GB movie, right? Let's say Vijay movie, the first uh, releasing in HD quality, right? It is on let's say suppose hundred GB. Okay. So RAM will say only four GB. You can't play Vijay. All Vijay fans will be like, oh my God, no. correct? No. It'll break out and then it'll find a way to go about it, but it'll be very slow. That is why systems will become slower when they can't execute it. Yes. Any other question? Greater uh, Pratul. Okay. Pratul. Greater economy. Economy means what? Money, guys. Okay. When I talked about money, I thought it's understandable, right? Money. Greater economy means it's great, cheaper. Less economical means what? It's a little bit costly, right? Moving data from page, sir. Data from RAM to paging files. It's very simple. When your RAM is full, when your RAM is full with what? See, imagine this is your RAM, da. Okay. Imagine this is your RAM. This. Let me change the color. This is what W N I R RAM. Okay. What it can only store WhatsApp and Instagram, right? If it's full, what will happen? It'll say don't run Instagram or I will prop up, right? What will take it? It'll move to another virtual space. It'll create an portion, take the portion of the secondary space. The name is called as paging file rather than calling it as secondary memory. We call it as a. It'll convert as a RAM or a paging file, and it'll move there for temporary. Please note. execution nothing happens there in paging file execution does not happen cpu cannot talk to the uh, uh, paging file also just to move keep it there too many items if you give you say wait i'll keep this on table and take it no like that only ram is also doing right you keep it there and then it'll execute the uh, work which has then take it and then go about it that's all it is hope that is clear Done, guys. We are done with the day, right?